Pluto. Bring back Pluto. Bring back Pluto. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union made a decision that shook the universe. These people are still angry. We represent the Pea Party, and we demand that Pluto be reinstated as our ninth planet. Yeah. Yeah. Why pick on Pluto? Because it's the smallest planet? I'm small. Are you going to throw me out of the solar system? I know someone that may have some answers. I'll visit my friend Professor Irving Robbins, director of the Astrophysical Observatory at CUNY's College of Staten Island. For over 40 years, Professor Robbins has tracked everything going on in outer space. I'll bet he can help restore Pluto to its rightful place as our ninth planet. No. <laughs> Sorry. Good night, everyone. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me elaborate. Unfortunately, you know, this was done by the International Astronomical Union. I don't think they're going to budge because of their definition of a planet. In this case, what they define the planet as is a, pl a body that can become round, and I'm, I'm speaking in simple Brooklynese terms, right? It's a nice round body, and it sweeps up everything in its orbit. So it's a loner as it goes around the sun. There's so many other bodies moving around in Pluto's orbit. Some of them may be bigger than Pluto. Also, Pluto has a funny orbit, you know, it crosses Neptune. And in fact, just recently, Pluto actually wasn't the farthest object in the solar system, Neptune was. And just a few years ago, Nept uh, Pluto crossed back out and was the so-called farthest planet. So it has an eccentric orbit. Yes, its orbit is, is eccentric. And that also disqualifies it from being a planet? That's also right. You gotta be gravitation around, you gotta be in your own orbit, you gotta sweep everything up. So by that definition, we can never make Pluto a full-fledged planet. Of course, now it is a type of planet, actually. They call it a dwarf planet. A dwarf isn't a planet. A dwarf is sleepy, sneezy, bashful, happy, or dark. That's right. And those scientists, they are grumpy and dopey. Yeah. The Kepler Space Telescope recently discovered yeah. new planets, hundreds of new planets. If they have room for them, they certainly have room for Pluto. Yeah. 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 Over 1,200 new planets. That's an, and not only did they find planets, they found solar systems, systems of planets. In fact, one very exciting one that they call Kepler-11 has six planets going around. They're very excited about that one. 50 of, this, of those planets, of the 1,200, are within that habitable zone. We call it the habitable zone because of the fact that water can exist there. That's only one handful. The place is teeming with habitable places of possible water. And in my viewpoint, of course, life under those circumstances is probably very common. The Kepler telescope is looking for Earth-like bodies outside our solar system. And Professor Robbins says that makes memorizing our eight planets as old-fashioned as when we had only eight TV channels especially with the new discoveries. In those planets, we found Jupiter planets, we found planets as big as Neptune, we found super-Earths, we found frozen planets, we found hot planets. Uh, so now maybe it's time that people start thinking about a new scheme of how you classify a planet. And I think maybe then, then maybe Pluto will be back in the family of planets. Pluto's a frozen world. Maybe we'll call it an F7 planet. F7? F for frozen and seven because of uh, its size. What is your mission here at the College of Staten Island? I teach liberal arts, basic astronomy classes. I have specialized courses in space science and, and astrophysics that I, that I teach from time to time uh, for people who are more in the science, who are scientists. But I mostly teach the non-scientists. I give a lot of lectures out to the general public. You love your job. Oh, of course I love my job. <laughs> being an educator, being a professor. And you get to play with cool I have, equipment. I have nice toys. One of the prettiest views I like in a telescope when I show the public yeah. is called the Orion Nebula. And this is a, a birthing place where you see new stars being born oh. and you see the cocoons that the stars are coming out of. I think you gotta be a bit of a romantic to be an astronomer. To study the heavens, study the universe, you know, I mean, it's, it's, to me, life is very short and it's really nice to get a sense of what it's all about. Small, big, whether you go down to the microscopic world, or, or the, it's all connected, it's all one giant connection. Except for Pluto. 
It's still there. It's a dwarf planet. <laughs> Unfortunately, Pluto remains a non-planet. But they're discovering new planets all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You mean like Planet Hollywood? Yeah. 